O Father in heaven, blessed be thy holy name. Let your Son be revealed unto us, that we might accept him as our personal Lord and Savior. Let your Son be revealed to the godless world, that he could be the Savior of their very souls. Help us, O Lord, as we are going through this message, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ancient march to heaven with Jesus as the leader. Marching around like soldiers. Yes, able soldiers. Singing and rejoicing. Oh, hear the sinners cry. Oh, no, had I know. In a voice I heard, gone, gone, they have gone, they have gone, marching to join the glory above. Oh no, had I know. Wake up, slumber, wake up, and prepare for the glory. See, meeting Jesus, your Savior, the captain of the band, this side before it's too late, or you join the groups that cry. Oh no, had I know. Oh no, the sinner voice I heard. Gone, gone. They have gone, they have gone, marching to join the glory above. Oh no, had I know, my Savior and Redeemer, who keep me from the wicked, the killer and the spoiler, the tempter and deceiver, oh, fill me with thy spirit to live beyond the cry. Oh, no, had I know. Oh, no, the sinner voice I had. Gone, gone, they have gone, they have gone. Marching to join the glory above. Oh, no, had I know. We thank God so much for bringing us to this message, this particular point in time. I am taking my test from Genesis chapter 19, verse 17. The, the thing says, escape for your life. The Bible said, it is foolish to gain the whole world, but lose your life, says the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, your life is very, very important to you. You don't need to bring it into a predicament as such as a great conflagration. In the book of Genesis, chapter 18, 19, we read through the destruction of the city of Sodom and Gomorrah and the thereabout town, Adma, Zeboim, and Zoar. The pronouncement of God upon these cities in dwellers is conflagration, conflagration, conflagrations all through. And there is nobody to withdraw or retrieve God's statement from destroying this city any longer. Be any person you are or the relationship you might keep with God. Abraham was the friend of God. Abraham was also the father of faith. He kept interceding for this city in Dweller, pleading, pleading, and pleading. But all the pleading could retrieve never God from destroying the city. 
to no one on earth could ever retrieve this great pronouncement of God from destroying these cities in dwellers. Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, Zeboim, and Zohar. So no one on earth could also plead with the Lord to stop these great actions. Abraham, as we said, was a friend of God. He was the father of faith. He kept interceding for the city of Sodom and Gomorrah and the thereabout towns. He was pleading with God, with the Lord, because of his nephew, Lord. But no one, but the one whose yes is yes, and no is no, could never withdraw his statement from destroying this city. This is the God we believe. And in his word we have believed there is never yea and nay. But in his word there is yea and amen. So whatsoever God has pronounced, there is nobody to stop him from the action. By reading through Genesis 18 from verse 22 to 32, we could listen to the voice of Abraham's pleading. The Bible said, as the men turned their faces towards Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham lingered. He kept still, still. He stayed still with the Lord. We were made to understand that three angels from heaven came to pass by and they branched to the house of Abraham. One in the midst of the angels were the Lord Jesus Christ appearing in the Old Testament. It is as if he is revealed to Abraham. So he stayed close near to the Lord and he was pleading, interceding for this city of Sodom and Gomorrah because of Lot, his nephew. Hear the voice of his pleading. Abraham said, Abraham stood before the Lord. He does not go. He wanted to plead more for the life of the city's inhabitant. But it is too difficult to rescue someone who had been condemned. And so it was impossibly difficult for Abraham to set them, to set them free from the conflagration near to come. In verse 23, we got to understand that he said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure, there be fifty righteous within the city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous therein? That was the voice of his pleading. He was diligently pleading with the Lord to spare the city's inhabitant. He was interceding like kneeling before the Lord so that the Lord could not destroy these cities. Though we got to understand in the Bible that these cities were ripe for harvest. Their iniquities have got to the ears of God in heaven. He got every proving that these cities need to be destroyed. But only it has to be displayed and opened to his friend Abraham. So he whispered and disclosed this secret to Abraham. Though the indwellers of Sodom and Gomorrah did not know anything that is on the way coming. They don't know that they were in danger. They don't know that there is a danger at hand. But someone was pleading with them on their behalf. That is how Christians and believers have been keeping pleading and interceding for the iniquities of the country, for the iniquities of the nation, for the iniquities of the whole country all over the world. Mm -hmm. Because they want to spare the life of people. God has sent us to preach the message to the nation so that the heaven is filled with the blessed and the converted one. Mm -hmm. God wants you to return from where you are going. He wants you to return back and get your life saved. Your life is very important. You don't need to introduce it into a predicament such as a conflagration of Sodom and Gomorrah. 
in verse 25, we got to understand through the Bible that he said, Let it be far from thee, O oh, to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee, shall not the judge of the whole earth do right? Abraham was still pleading. He was progressively pleading for the cities in Dweller. In verse 26, the angel answered Abraham, and the Lord said, If I found fifty within the city, then I will spare all the place for the sake of the sixty. That is Sodom and Gomorrah and Nadma and Zeboim and Zoa. If they could be able to provide fifty righteous people, God is going to spare the whole city from being destruction. They will never be destroyed. How pity and how sad it might look today if we are calling the name of God, if we are calling the name of Christ. In this great country, Nigeria, the last census has recorded a 180 million people. But when Christ comes today, will he find 50 righteous men in Nigeria and other countries of the world? Abraham was still proceeding. In verse 27, he said, Hear Abraham's voice in pleading for the salvation of the city of these ungodly people. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am just but a dust and an ashes. Abraham know that he doesn't have any common, no standard, no comparison with the Lord to stand before him to plead. But he did not want the waste life of the cities in Dweller. He want the Lord to spare their life. He considered himself as an ashes before the Lord. He considered himself as a dust before the Lord. That it is not good for him to stand before the Lord to plead. That is how it is. He was pleading diligently, but all the pleading could offer no salvation to the city in Dweller because of their state, of their state of unconversion. We read through verse 45, and they answered him, We will not spare it, we will not destroy it, if we found such a people. Abraham said, Paradventure, there shall be lack five of the fifty righteous. Will you dare destroy the city because five is lack from fifty? And he said, If I found forty-five, I will not destroy it. Abraham continued through verse 29. And Abraham speaks again unto him, yet again, and said, Paradventure, there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for the sake of the forty. Abraham's mind could never rest. What if forty righteous people will not find in this city? So they are going to destroy them. And so he continued progressively in pleading with the Lord. And he said unto him, through verse 30, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. He said, Paradventure, 30 righteous men be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I found 30 righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah. And yet Abraham could not wait. And he said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Paradventure, that there shall be 20 found there. And he said, I will still not destroy it for the sake of 20. In short, Abraham have tried. These people do not offer any thank. They don't know if anybody is pleading on their behalf. They did not bring any offering, any tribute to Abraham because of pleading for these people. But Abraham continued. 
and that is how it's supposed to be in the life of any believer in the life of any preacher of the gospel we don't want to waste the life of any single soul the bible made it clear that the heaven will be happy even if a single soul got repented and converted over the 99 people that does not need to be repent or converted so through verse 32 through verse 32 abraham continued and he said oh let me let the lord be not angry with me and i will speak yet but once oh let not the lord be angry and i will speak yet but once abraham kept requesting for these people he has been trying. He don't want to offend the Lord. And also, he don't want the Lord to destroy this city's inhabitants. So, his heart was full of pity over the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. Though the people of Sodom and Gomorrah don't know that they are going against the Lord. They don't know that they are in the greatest iniquities that deserve punishment. Abraham could not stop. He was pleading. He was pleading at least he could get some little righteous people to which by the angel could stop destroying the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And he said, "Peradventure, adventure, ten people be found there which are righteous. Will you still destroy the cities? The Lord, and he said, I will not because of the ten people that are righteous in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now let us clearly analyze this in a little more details. Now, the cities to which God is going to destroy were five in number. Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, Zippoin, and Zohar. What the angels, the Lord is saying here is that each city could produce at least two righteous men and two righteous men from these five cities will become ten righteous men he will no longer destroy the city he will no longer waste any life their life will no longer be in a danger but the city of sodom could not prove there is no two righteous people the city of gomorrah could not provide two righteous people the city of Adma could not provide two righteous people. Neither could the city of uh, Zeboim could produce two righteous people. Because of the sake of the two righteous people in each of these cities, there is nothing to stop the destructions and the conflagration over these people. So the Lord left after communicating with Abraham. He was facing through his direction and Abraham returned unto his home but with no rest in his mind as we could understand in the little further so we have heard the voice of Abraham pleading but despite all the pleading and his and his relationship with God it was too late to cry when the head is off the iniquities and the bad habit of the people in dwellers have gone beyond the limit they only deserve punishment and there is nothing to stop that they did not know that abraham was pleading for their rescue interceding vehemently for these people but in chapter 19 verse 4 they prove it clearly that they are ripe for the harvest so what do verse 4 say in chapter 19 verse 4 said but before they lay down, before the angel could go to rest, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lord and said unto him, Where are the men which came in thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. That we may know them. So the angel arrives in the evening. 
But before they could lay down, all of a sudden, the men of this city, of this godless city, Sodom and Gomorrah, compassed round about the house of Lot, both old and younger people. And they came to Lot to press hardly on him, to br brought out those visitors, those strangers, the angel from heaven, that they want to fornicate with them. Oh, look at these people that are corrupted with gay from the time of the old. They have been continued in proceeding in their iniquities, men unto men, halotry, prostitution, fornication, and the rest of all sorts that God wants to destroy them. Today they have proved it clearly in the presence of Lord and in the presence of the angel and in the presence of God and in the presence of anybody who is reading through this Genesis chapter 19 that the people of Sodom and Gomorrah are ready for harvest. They are ready for destruction and there is nothing to stop this destru destruction any longer. The proving have been made manifest. They want to go further to endangering their life by fornicating with the angel of the Lord. How dear man! That is why they are ready for harvest. Oh, they are ready. The Bible said in the book of Ezekiel chapter 21 from verse 9 to 11. He said, removing sword and a glittering sword have been removed. They are ready for cutting in asunder. They are ready for destruction. So, the spare have been removed against the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. There is nothing to stop it cutting the people in pieces. And that is the conflagration very little near to come. The proving have been made clearly manifested. They are not good. They are good to be destroyed. The people of Sodom and Gomorrah, they are good for nothing. They need to be destroyed. Because God want, do not want us to continue with such an evil activity in this life. He wants to put an end to the, the habit of these people, uh, Sodom, Gomorrah, Admazibuin, and Zohar. In verse 14, he said, The people, the, that the angel, that the angel, blinded the eyes of the young men and the old men of the cities. And then while they have put Lord inside and locked the door, they put their eyes to blind and they got tired in searching for the door. The Bible also made us to understand that as they were inside with Lord, they commanded Lord, they warned him, that go and tell any of your relations that this city is going to be destroyed. There is nothing to stop it. And verse 14 says, When Abraham went out to those that are supposed to marry his daughter, when he went out and tell them, gave them the warning of the angel, that these people made jest with the word of God. They made jest with the warning of the angel. They think that Lord was playing. They think he was not serious. They think there is nothing to happen. Today, we experience such the same. We experience things like that. When you pronounce a conflagration, a hell, a lake of fire from heaven, they will say, brother, did you go to heaven? They said, the God of all mercy could never put anyone into hell. They said the God of all grace could never put anyone into the lake of fire. Believe me, and please do not be deceived. Do not mock yourself and do not make jest of the word of God. We have a God who has mercy, full of mercy. We have a God of all grace. We also have a God of all righteousness that must punish 
every evil activities that are proceeding happening under this planet earth there is nothing to stop that in verse 15 he said the angel told lord in the morning saying arise take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here and go out of the city they said arise and go out of the city with your family they said, Arise, take your wife, take your two daughters, and go out of, the, of, of this city, lest thou be consumed with the iniquity of the city. In verse 16, we understand that Abraham lingered. Why do he linger? When, why he lingered, the man, the angel, get hold of his hand, and the wife's hand, and the daughters, and pull them out of the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. The Bible said that the Lord have mercy unto him, and they brought him forth and set him without the city. Why do Abraham linger? Why do the wife and the daughters linger? They linger because they have kept all their resources in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, which are to be destroyed today. Abraham got separated from the friend of God. Sorry, Lord got separated from the friend of God, Abraham. Why? Because that his cattle were got multiplied, that they were struggling for grazing. And so he got separated and he kept marching on until he got to the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. But today that Lord is commanded to leave the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, he was to go without any of his cattle. He was to go without any of his sheep. He was to go without any of his friends. He was to go without any of his known person in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And so Lord lingered. He don't want to go. He don't want to go. No matter what the level of love you think you love the world, I am telling you the reality that the world must be destroyed, that the world must be conflagrated. If you kept all your resources here in the world, it will be painful to you if they pronounce a conflagration upon the earth, if they pronounce a lake of fire upon the earth, because you have, it is where you have built your mansions. It is where you have kept your money in the bank. It is where you have established your companies. It is where you have kept your certificate and all sort of education you have acquired. You don't want the destruction of the earth. But sure, it is coming. Sure, it is coming that the earth must be destroyed with fire. So long as the people of Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed, God is going to destroy one day this city, the whole world, with fire. In verse 17, he said, When they have brought them forth abroad, when they have brought them forth abroad, so in verse 17 is our particular place we need to, 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 to search in a little more details. This is where we need to waste a little time to analyze it clearly. So we are taking it from verse chapter 19, verse 17. He said, verse 17 said, And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain least thou be consumed. We are going to take this line after line. He said, when they have brought them forth abroad, that is, when they have brought Lot and his wife and his daughters, when they have got them separated from the people of the city, yes, it has been the practice of God, even from the time of the old. As Abraham have said, that it is not good for the judge of the whole world to condemn the wicked together with the righteous. So God, uh, it has been, been a practice of God to separate the evil from the right, from the good. To separate the bad from the good. To separate the wicked from the righteous. So, 
They have not forgotten Lord. They separated Lord and his family from the city's indweller. In the Bible, we also understand that a day is coming, the day of the judgment of the Lord, when he will ascend the throne of glory, that he is going to separate the sheep from the goat. We also heard in the Bible that the time is coming, that when he is going to make clean his floor, the barn floor, that the chaff is going to be separated from the seed of the corn. So it has been the practice of the Lord to separate the evil, the iniquities from the good. No matter what it is, God is never going to condemn the world together with the people of the righteous, the believers and the unbeliever. He has once says in the Bible that the light has nothing in common with darkness. The children of God, the believers are the sons of light. Why the unbelievers are the children of darkness, they will never be condemned together. That is made manifest in the A part of verse 17. And the B part of verse 17 said, And he said, The commanded Lord, together with his wife and his daughters, and he said, Escape for your life, save your life. Es escape for your life means save your life. Run for your life. Run with all your effort. Run as if a sudden event is happening. As you are running, you don't need to look back until you get to a distance and you will begin to ask for the behinder. Run as if nobody is coming after you. Run as if uh, a sudden event is happening. Before you like a run like a killer who runs from the avengers of the blood. There is a command given to the people of Israel. The city of refugees, six of them were given to the people of Israel. Three at this side Jordan and three at the other side Jordan. He said by accidentally, if a person killed a brother, he's supposed to run with all his effort to enter the refugee camp. As he is running, the avenger of the blood will be running after him. If he make any delays, if he lingered and he is God caught by the avengers of the blood, the iniquity will be upon himself. That is the example of the kind of warning the angels were given to Lord today. Run for your life. Run as if you are running from the avengers of the blood. Run with all your effort. You must run because fire is coming behind you. The sea part of verse 17 says, Look not behind thee. That means get no divided attention. Let your heart not be troubled. Do not deceive yourself. God is not mocked. If he said, do not look behind, the commandment does not mean interpretation. This is the problem of many Christians today. When the Bible commanded anything, they will begin to try to turn it upside down to suit their habit. That is wrong. He said, you don't need to do that. If God have commanded, it simply means to obey. Command means to obey. Run for your life. That, will, that was what they told Lord and his family. Get no divided attention. Forward ever, backward never. He who lifted up a hole and looked back is not worthy of the kingdom, says the Lord. He says, if your friend and your people are not even coming behind you, go forward. If your friend and your parent and nobody is coming after you, be keeping going like the song of an Indian lady. He said, I have decided to follow Jesus. Though no one join me, I will still go further. Hold the word, I will hold Jesus. Run like that. Do not consider if anybody is coming or nobody is coming. Run for your life first. And the deep part of verse 17 says, 
He said, Neither stay thou in all the plain. Do not linger anywhere in the wilderness. Do not linger anywhere in the plain. Do not keep standing. Do not stand still anywhere in the earth. The earth is a wilderness. Jeremiah told the people of Judah, the day that Nebuchadnezzar was destroying the city of Jerusalem, he said, all of you who have escaped the sword of Nebuchadnezzar, you should stand no still, but run to a distant place and pray to God afar off from anywhere you may find yourself. In Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 50, you shall stand no still because the world is a wilderness. You shall stand no still anywhere in the plain. Do not stay still anywhere in the world. The world is a wilderness. No matter how beautiful it might be look before your sight, it is presented in the Bible in compared to heaven as a wilderness. The world is the wilderness. No matter how beautiful the world might be to you, the Bible made us clear, made us to understand that every people in the world, the nations, the cities, and the hidden have got drunk the cup of the world and they all become crazy. They are mad. He who is reading the book of Revelation chapter 17, 18, and 19 would discover that Babylon here picture the whole world that goes in hostility with God. Who want to turn the grace of God, who want to turn what God has planned upside down. So is it not madness when you, a man, turn yourself a woman? Is it not crazy when you transgend yourself? Is it, not mad, is it not madness when you, a boy, dress like a gear, and when you, a gear, dress like a boy? Is it not madness when you, a man, marrying a man as your wife? Is it not madness when a woman married a woman as his wife? And you said you are wise. And you said that is civilization. Has God not turned the wisdom of men into destructions? For in the Bible we got to understand that it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. So is it not madness when you call the preaching of the cross foolishness? So where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Had God not made foolish the wisdom of this world, as we have read in 1 Corinthians chapter 19, uh, chapter 1 from verse 19 to 20. So is it not madness when you go in with someone's wife or someone's husband? Are you not mad when you go in with an animal? Are you not mad, but not wise, when you go in with a baby, and when you go in with your daughter, and when you go in with your in-law, and when you go in with your sister? So, by comparison, I could imagine a singer who is even not a preacher, but referring to this word as crazy word. He said, we are living in the crazy world. The, goal, the world that goes in hostility with God is going crazy. That we are living in a crazy world. How can you imagine a community of 100 population and 90 madmen are found there? Will you delay or linger in the city? Then you have to find yourself to be blamed. That is the warning of the angel. You will be consumed, says the Lord. So the deep part of it, the deep part of it says, escape to the mountain. 
He said, escape to the mountain. That is another warning from the angel to the Lord and to his wife and to his daughter. He said, escape to the mountain. Yes, there is a mountain we could run to this day, and that is the Mount of Calvary. 1,000 years ago, a savior of the world was hung crucified because of the madness and the iniquities of us all. His hand were stretched forth, calling all the godless nation and the crazy world to embrace and to make manifest to show them his love, to show them his perfect love. The cross pointed to the four corners of the whole earth. He said, come to me, all ye that labor, and I will give you rest. He wants to give us, he wants to forgive us. He wants to, to erase our iniquities and our madness. He wants all our stubborn heart and sin and iniquities to be cleansed by his precious blood on the cross. He was hung on the cross of Calvary. If you will run to Calvary's mount today and you embrace the love that was made manifest to you, happy, happy, of the Lord Jesus Christ pointed to the four corners of the earth to call the whole nation into reconciliation with him. He wants us to be reconciled. He wants our sins to be forgiven. He wants our madness and crazy activities, all sorts of action that doesn't glorify God, to be washed with his precious blood. He said, you will be blessed if you acknowledge this and you run to Mount Calvary today to embrace the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, his first word from the cross says, forgive them, Father, for they not know what they do. And it is true, there is no madman who ever realized that he is mad. If any madman could realize that something wrong is happening to me, it means his sickness has gone. So a madman could deny it of his state. He will say, he will claim to be a sick free man. For God manifests his own love toward us. Is that why we were yet sinner? Christ died for us. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8. His love kept pleading and waiting. Will you accept him today as and your madness and iniquities goes. For your sin and iniquities will I forgive and remember no more. In Hebrew chapter 10 verse 7. How shall you escape this great salvation if you neglect this offering today? He said, come and let's reason together. Though your iniquities might be black, I will make you as white as snow. He is ready to forgive your madness. He is ready to forgive your sin. No matter the level of iniquities you might have attained, he wants to embrace you, come as you are, and he will cleanse you with his precious blood. His blood is enough to wash away all our iniquities and sins, and he will forgive and remember no more. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. So, why do God has to destroy these cities? In the Bible, we got some points that make God to destroy the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. In Jude verse 7, he said, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the city about them, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. In Jude chapter 1, verse 7. Which means God destroyed the city of Sodom and Gomorrah because they were fornicators and God hate fornicating. Second, God destroyed the city of Sodom and Gomorrah because they go after strange flesh. This means they kept proceeding from fornicating they kept progressively going from stages to another. It starts all from the lost. It continues from the lost to fornications, 
from fornication to cast novin to sodomite and that which implies to homosexuality lesbian lesbianism gay and the rest stop trying to move. the lost the lost is created by god to compel you to fulfill what god have planned god planned for any man to marry and he planned it for women to marry the opposite sex in the will of god but if you allow your lust to mislead you to take you astray and instead of fulfill what god have planned you went into fornication that means you have gone a little bit further you can no longer stay in fornication for a long as you kept fornicating and you never realize your mistake to return back to god you will be proceeding from one level to another and the next worst level you will go is casnova in casnovin activity simply means you don't hate anyone again all people of sort you love them even a dwarf even a stingy even a disabled woman even a baby any kind of woman at all you will like them even the mad i could imagine i have in this country i have been seeing many mad women under pregnancy i was imagine what happened to them that they got them pregnant it was not the mad men that got them pregnant it were the full men that doesn't suffer from any kind of madness at all but the reason is because they were not on the normal stage to which they were created but they were on the cast nova stage so they can do what man supposed not to do as you are staying in these stages of life you will stay for a little while and you will be promoted to sodomite sodomite simply means you don't you go in with your sisters you go in with your brother you go in with your father's wife you go in with your in-law you go all sorts that have been forbidden in the book of leviticus chapter 18 you will go through all this because you have never realized and find your mistake solution to come before the lord and to get your sins and iniquities washed away you will not stay there for over forever but you will be promoted from sodomite to homosexuality that means it is they are attracted of other members of the same sex either being a male androphile or a female uh, genophile that is gay and lesbianism a man will be attracted to man and a woman will be attracted to woman and that is sin and when the sin come to it full stage it resulted to death in the book of james chapter 1 verse 14 he says but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed then when lust have conceived it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death so the wages of sin is ever death and nothing the wages of sin is death the point number three that made god to punish these people god wanted to put to an end such all activities that are madness it is not good and people start practicing people start practicing what god have in the longer longest time forbidden people start practicing what god have set a conflagration a brimstone from heaven to destroy the whole city including the pregnant women even the little children in their womb all were got destroyed because if god spared their life this seed is going to germinate and fool the earth what god have put a stoppage to it how dare you oh man to get it rise up again and bring it into power and start pronouncing it upon people for people to practice if you have choose a way to go to hell why not go you alone to hell why are you bringing other people to go with you are you satan you need to repent 
of your iniquities and come to Christ today to have everlasting life. So, we therefore got to understand that God who have not spared the people of Sodom and Gomorrah in the time of the old, if he forgoes the iniquities of today and do not get the word punished, then God is going to tender an apology to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. If he condemned the gay and lesbianism in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah and got them destroyed in the time of the old, then he must set ablaze all the activities of lesbianism and gay in this country of the world today. And if he failed to do that, he is going to tender an apology before the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. And which we believe the possibility of God tendering an apology to the city of Sodom and Gomorrah will be very, very difficult to merit. It is impossibly difficult. It cannot happen. It cannot happen. God made the Sodom and Gomorrah as an example of everlasting fire. So anything that has an example also has a reality. Anything that has a shadow has its original image. So the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah serves as a preface to everlasting fire. It is an example of the everlasting fire. Since we have got the example and the shadow, the reality of it is coming. And God is going to set ablaze the nation of the whole world. He is going to destroy the whole world of its evil activities. We need to run for our life. We need to run to the mountain. We need to embrace Jesus Christ today as our personal Lord and Savior. For He is the way that leads through the salvation through all eternity. Through all eternity. We also study this in the Bible, in the book, from the book of Ezekiel. There are a number of things that were not mentioned in Genesis, to which God have possibly destroyed the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Point number five is pride. They were full of proud. And point number six is excess of food and the abundance of idleness, number seven. The son of Sodom and Gomorrah, the daughter and the son in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, they have an abundance of idleness. They don't work. They don't want to work. They are lazy. But they are always trying to be filled with excess food. That is what is happening today. Younger people do not want to work, but they want to be a millionaire overnight. And that leads them to fornicating, that lead them to commit adultery, that lead them for murdering to murdering, that also lead them for all sorts of gambling, that lead them to kidnappings and all other activities that deserve punishment, sure to come, and there is nothing to stop that. Number eight. The, the, the people of the Sodom and Gomorrah, they were extremely wicked. The Bible said they do not aid the poor and the needy. And point number nine says they were haughty. And point number ten, the last point says, and for all these things, they began to commit abomination before the Lord. And he said, as I saw them, and I took them the way I saw it good. That was happened. There are best of friends in my village. They were not living in obedience to God. They were living in a polygamous life. And apart from that, they are living in hostility with God. They were attracted to many wives and concubines, drinking, uh, spending time in nightclub, party, and hotel. Though they were an old man, they were not too younger. And why these people continue this life for a while? 
one of the partner got repented and cried unto the Lord for forgiveness. And I could observe his practice from the time of his conversion. I can testify of his faith in Christ. And immediately, he began to come to his friend and pleading with him for repentance. But his friend was such a kind that is full of pride. He said, I am a good man. I help the poor. I gave them, I gave the widow food and clothes and wrappers, which were true because I know the man and I can test him, I can give his testimony. As he continued this way, there was a time a preacher of the gospel got to him and said, Sir, all this sort of life doesn't please God. Please, can't you have a time and take side with the Lord Jesus? And God repented of your sin today. And the man replied, If we get to heaven in the time of the end, that God is going to mark all our activities, at least God is going to give me 60 over 100. And if someone scores 60 over 100, he asked the person never pass. He said, you should go away. If God mark my activities, I will be a past man in heaven. And the preacher of the gospel left him. Just for a few days, the man was carrying a bucket of water to get his bed in the bathroom. On his way going, he fell on the ground and the life had gone. Immediately the life had gone. It was in the midst of the day, about 3 p.m. The friend got information, the old friend got information. And he was on the high speed with his bike. He ran to the gate of his friend and he jammed himself to the ground and cried, shouted aloud, Oh my friend, where are you today? So how will it be when the time of the destruction of our world will come? Where will you be found? In the last part of verse 17 says, If you fail to observe any of this command, you will be consumed. He said, least you will be consumed, warned the angel. So if you don't escape for your life, if you don't separate yourself, if you don't escape for your life, if you don't run to the mountain, if you don't embrace the, the love of Jesus Christ to have your sins forgiven, you will be consumed. 